Hi, and welcome to the Spare Time Shop. I'm Ruben, and this is my soon-to-be shop. As you can tell, it still needs some TLC. We've been renovating our house for the last year and used this shed as storage. Now the house is pretty much done, so it's finally time to start turning this old shed into my new workshop. We do have some issues that need fixing, like the second floor, for example, is almost completely rotten, so it's not safe to go upstairs. I have some stuff stored up there, but I have to be very careful where I step. Also, the electrical installation is quite outdated. The sockets and lamps don't work anymore, and that might be for the best because this is the main fuse. There are some brick walls in the shed that need to make way for more floor space. Luckily, I've got some good help from my girlfriend's little brother, so demolition went really well. Ooh! Whoa! Yeah! Nice! When tearing out the brick stairs, we noticed there was no flooring underneath, so a hole in the ground opened up. I laid some of the bricks down and mixed up a couple bags of concrete to pour it in. Just enough to fill the hole flush to the existing tiles. As I don't have electricity in the shed, I could only work until it gets dark. So I'm very much looking forward to installing some lamps ASAP. With every old barn come its residents. While I don't mind spiders that much, I have to remove them before we get to paint. There is a small storage room in the back of the shed that's full of junk and leftover tiles that need to be cleaned up. This room will be the storage room for all small parts and tools, so I'm installing wall to wall racks. The floor is made up of these old farmer tiles that, no matter how much I sweep, will stay dirty forever. That's why I'm pouring a new concrete slab. But first I need to move all this junk upstairs, because I want to use the first floor to store bigger pieces like wood beams and boards. I am planning on removing these stairs and putting them on the other side of the shop. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, they're not quite sturdy. Second of all, this is a huge waste of space. They're jammed in the corner and I could be using all this floor space any other way. And the third reason, when you want to go upstairs as of now, you have to cross all the way across the shop to the back to reach the stairs. And I'd rather limit as much foot traffic as possible. That's why I'm thinking of putting the stairs at the front of the shop next to the entrance. Makes a lot of sense, right? So up till now I always had to pull in an extension cord from the house to get power to the shed. And that's one of the first things I want to tackle. So we're going to install power and lights because this is the only one I've got right now. Wow. Let's start with removing all the old parts and wires.
So we got the power cable coming in through the wall right here on the first floor. But that's okay, because I want to place the fuse box right here. That way I can run all the cables along the ceiling all the way to the back of the shed without anything getting in the way. But first I need to prep this wall to mount the fuse box. I'm hanging the empty fuse box on the wall and adding a large cable tray underneath to collect all the cables in one spot. I'll put every cable in a PVC sleeve just for protection. I'm connecting the main fuse and ground rail where all the fuses will be connected to later. Starting with the lights, I'm marking and mounting all the positions of the light switches so I know where the cables will go to. Now I know what you're thinking. It's not really normal that the switches are up this high on the wall, but it actually makes a lot of sense because I'm planning on building a deck all the way across the shed. And that way I'll be up even higher and this will be, you know, normal. And next up is running some new wires along the ceiling, cutting PVC pipes to length and connecting the switches to the cables. I'm stapling the wires to the beams all the way to the first light. Installing the light was as easy as screwing two clips to the wood and clicking the armature into place. Connecting the switch is as simple as following the instructions that came with it. I've also got some help from my brother, who knows more about electrical work than I do. I've opted to use only watertight electrical components in the shed, as it's still quite a humid space. Now finally time to test the lights. Now we can run some more wires and connect all the other light fixtures. Now I don't really have a solid plan or layout for the shop as of now, so I'm not sure where I'm going to put all my tools and workbenches. That's why I'm not really sure where I'm going to put all the outlets. So I thought it was a good idea to just put them wherever I can. And I thought about these columns. Now there are four of them across the shop. They support the steel beams of the second floor and they're spaced out quite evenly across the space. So I'm planning on putting an outlet on each of these columns. That way I can just, you know, put every tool I have wherever I can. And why not just one outlet, but let's make it three. Because you never know. I marked where the outlets will go and drilled some holes for the plug. Mounted the box and ran some more wires along the ceiling and walls. Connecting the wires is quite specific for these types of European outlets. So I won't go into detail as it's pretty much different for each country. Same goes for the fuse box. The most important thing to note here is that I foresaw a separate fuse for each outlet. Which might be overkill, but it won't hurt. And with the power on, it's time for a test run. I also installed some outlets on the outside of the shed. Added some new lights and outlets on the first floor. And with no more cables to run, it's finally time to close up the cable tray and the fuse box. I labeled everything and closed up the remaining spaces. And now for the most satisfying part. Nice. 
Okay, so now that the electricity is out of the way, I think it's time for a coat of paint. So I got myself one of these. Now, I've never used a paint spray before, but I thought since the walls here have such a rough texture, I really didn't look forward to um, painting the whole thing with brushes and rolls. So let's hope this works. Filling up the paint reservoir is really the messiest part of this whole operation. I didn't tape anything off because everything needs to be white. And if I overspray something, it won't matter that much. It took me a while to get the settings of the spray gun right, but once I got it, painting went really smoothly. You could say that the room already is white and painting it again won't be necessary, but when going over it with a fresh layer of paint, you can clearly see the difference. I used a piece of cardboard to go around the edges like the door trim and the window. Just look at how much lighter and cleaner this room feels. So as you can see, I'm done uh, painting all the walls. Um, all in all, it took me about two days. Now I still have some paint left, so I'm thinking about also painting the wooden beams on the first floor. And I still have not yet painted the windows. That's because I'm thinking about doing them in another color, because everything white would be you know, a bit boring. I simply painted over all the beams and cables, but did not focus on the underside of the flooring, as I will replace these later. And with the help of my girlfriend, we stayed up late and painted the windows black, to get that steel door kind of look we both like. But I still felt like there was something missing, so I primed and painted the steel beams of the first floor in a bright yellow. Now this adds just a little bit of color and gives a sort of more industrial feel. Needless to say, I'm really happy with how it all turned out so far. Alright, that's it for now. Tune in to the next video where we will be replacing the flooring and stairs of the first floor and pouring and polishing a new concrete slab. Bye bye! Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.